I once heard that an open mind was being prepared to throw away some of our most cherished beliefs when a better idea comes along. Now, you'll find that the vast majority of people seems to back into the future, dragging all of their old experience with them. When they're confronted with a new idea, they ask, does it fit? If it doesn't, then they say it's wrong. Now, what we want to do is ask ourselves, would this new idea improve the quality of my life, or would it get me going in the other direction? Can I entertain a new idea? Today and tomorrow, you're going to be asked to entertain many new ideas, but every one of the ideas that we're going to share with you are going to be positive, they're going to be creative, they're going to be constructive, and they'll definitely improve the quality of your life. Then we see the second one, can I entertain another person? Now, there's many people that would feel totally uncomfortable walking up to a stranger and just saying, hi, how are you today? Pleased to meet you, Jan. Now, do you know some people, when it comes to meeting a person, their head is down, their hand is wet, they're shaking inside, their heart is pounding, and they only do it because they really have to. They would just as soon pull away from the new person. Now, that individual has not learned very much, if anything, about themselves, because we should feel totally comfortable meeting anyone, anywhere, at any time. And then he asks, can I entertain myself? Well, you know, many people are not able to entertain themselves. I spent half my life not being able to entertain myself. I always had to be around someone else. It was always, come on, let's have a party. I absolutely hated being alone. And that was because I really didn't like myself. Now, I have found through studying the ideas that we're going to cover here over the next couple of days, we can develop into very interesting and reasoning companions. Most of the time that we live, we do spend with ourselves. And you're going to find that some of the very best conversations you ever have are going to be with yourself. I get so excited about some of mine, I talk right out loud. That draws, you know, a strange look from people from time to time. But you get such great ideas going in your mind that you just can't help it. Now, here in the first paragraph, we say that this program, You Were Born Rich, is based on the premise that you have rich resources lying dormant within you. I have heard many people uh, laugh when they take a look at our program or take a look at the title of the book, Born Rich. You see, they think that means that you've been born into great wealth. Some people are, but some people are not. But everyone, without exception, has been born with tremendous resources lying within them. We've got deep reservoirs of talent and ability. And through following right rules and natural laws, we're going to find that we can draw that potential to the surface and we can bring it to bear and it will cause the manifestation of prosperity in our material world. Now, in almost all the seminars that either John or myself does, we take and we put an R here in the board. Now, what I would like to suggest you do is you let that R represent the results that you're getting in your life. Now, there's three areas that we're going to suggest that you focus on. One is happiness. One is health, and another one is material wealth. Now, when I first started to study this material, I was not happy, I was not healthy, and I definitely was not wealthy. I had a chap sit down with me, and he saw something in me that I obviously wasn't capable of seeing in myself. His name was Raymond Stanford, Raymond Douglas Stanford. In fact, I named my son after him, Raymond Douglas Proctor. And Ray looked at me and he said, Bob, let these, this here represent results that you're getting in your life. Then he asked me if I thought he was a happy person. And I said, yeah, I thought he was. He said, have you ever seen me sick? And I had to admit I hadn't. He said, have you ever seen me when I was broke? And again, I had to admit I hadn't. Well, he proceeded to tell me that he thought I was one of the most miserable people he had ever met. Well, and you know, it was true. I was an unhappy human being. He said, you're always sick. Now, I didn't have a terminal illness, but I always had a headache or a cold or a backache or something. And he pointed at the area of money. He said, you're always broke. He said, you're forever trying to hit somebody up for a couple of dollars for gas. Now, if I was to put this in proper perspective for you, I was earning $4,000 a year at the time, and I owed six. So do you see, I wasn't really interested in being happy or healthy at the time. I figured if I could just get this money problem straightened out, everything was going to be great. He proceeded to tell me that there were certain laws governing happiness, and if you follow them, you can just keep getting happier and happier. 
That sounded a little foreign to me, but that was his opinion. And he pointed out that you and I have an ingenious system built within us to keep our body in excellent working order. And then when he talked about the area of money, he said, you know, he said there's exact laws governing wealth. And he pointed out, he said, this stuff cannot talk, but it can hear. And he said, if you call it, it'll come. Well, I can assure you, I was ready to yell at the top of my lungs. I mean, if there was anything I wanted, it was some money. I figured it would take the heat off for a little while. Ray suggested that I go out and buy this book. It's Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich. And you know, he said there's a secret in this book. And he said, if you can find the secret in the book, you can have anything you seriously want. Now, you take a person that's unhappy, not very healthy, is in debt, you'd have a difficult time accepting that. I was 26, and I just couldn't accept the idea. But as Ray said, your way's not working, why don't you try his? And that's what I'd like to suggest to you today. If you're not getting the results you want, your way obviously isn't working, why don't you try ours? Now, I often mention that John and I have got license to brag about every idea we use because none of them are ours. We don't claim uh, that we've originated these ideas. In fact, we openly admit we haven't. We've just gathered them from books here and seminars there and great teachers all over the world. And what we've done is put them together in an organized, coherent manner. So if your way is not giving you the results you want, I would suggest that you take a real serious look at these ideas. Now, I looked for the secret and I couldn't find it, but I found in one place here, he said a peculiar thing about this secret is that those who once acquire it and use it find themselves literally swept on to success with but little effort and they never again submit to failure. What a marvelous promise. He said, if you doubt this, study the names of those who have used it wherever they've been mentioned. Check their records for yourself and you'll be convinced. Now he lists upwards of a hundred names here. He's got Henry Ford, William Wrigley, James J. Hill, George Eastman, Theodore Roosevelt. He goes on here, uh, John D. Rockefeller, Thomas Edison, Luther Burbank, Woodrow Wilson. How could I relate to any of those people? I couldn't relate to them. But you see, in that first part, he said, check their names or check their records wherever they've been mentioned. So I did that. And I got out books on Edison and I got books on Rockefeller and I got books on Woodrow Wilson and all the great people that he had mentioned here. And you know what I found? I found they were no different than you. They were no different than me. Many of them had very little formal education, which made me feel fairly comfortable because I didn't either. Many of them had very, very rough roads to start on. But I found out we were essentially all the same. Do you know what was different? The results they were getting. And as I studied on here further, in his chapter on persistence, and, and he mentions that persistence to the quality or to the character of the human being is like what carbon is to steel, he said the only thing that he could find in Edison or Ford that he never found in everyone else was persistence. They'd get a hold of an idea and they'd stick with that idea. And I look back in my own life and I never did that. I'd try something a couple of times and if it was rough, I quit. I'd have people say, oh, Bob, why don't you just give it up? I'd say, yeah, you're right, and I would. Now, you see, the people I was mixing with, they were losing too. I never stuck at anything. So I made up my mind, if I ever found this secret, I'd work it right until I died. Now, I did find the secret. It was in a hundred different places in the book, and it was simply sit down, decide what you want, Write it on a card, carry the card in your pocket, and read it as often as possible every day. Now, keep in mind, I was earning 4000 I owed six. I was sitting in a fire hall at the time, and I wrote on the card that I was going to have my possession by New Year's Day of 1970, $25,000. Now, I wrote that on the card in 1960. You know, the idea of uh, having $25,000, it, uh, it was sort of a fantasy. I don't think it was $25,000 in the whole fire hall at the time. Now, I wrote that in the card in 1960, keep in mind. I gave myself a decade to pull this deal off. I really didn't believe it was going to happen. But I found out a couple of things. I found if you write a lie on a card and you read it often enough, you're going to start to believe it. And you know, William, Ring, or, um, William James, back around the turn of the century, he said, believe and your belief will actually create the fact. 